What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Championship Challenge. I actually have, like, zero idea what episode we're on, um, because I actually recorded another episode, uh, but I wasn't super happy with the games in it, so I never put it up, so, um, I don't know what episode it is. I will put it in the title. Anyway, welcome back. Um, my name is Wolf Flick. I'm here to play some Pokemon. I'm going to be using the team that I used, uh, in the Roanoke Regional Championship, so I, I went 3-3 three and three in this, in this tournament, um, and obviously, like, I'm not super happy with that finish, but I think... Um, the result was like mostly a, t uh, a result of me not being familiar with the team and not really about the team itself. I actually didn't build this team. I made some modifications to it, but uh, this team built was built by uh, a player who goes by Ketchup Plant. He's um, one of the like nicest, like kindest people I ever met. He helped me a lot try to learn the team. Um, I just like it, it doesn't really make a ton of sense like in my head as to how it's supposed to work. So. That's part of why I didn't do very well with it, but uh, I'm hoping that like I can practice a little bit more with it and hopefully get a little bit better. So, I have Tapu Bulu Arcanine, Gyarados, Togedemaru, Persian, and Nihilego, and my opponent has Garchomp, Braviary, Arcanine, Tapu Koko, Kartana, and Snorlax. So, this team has a lot of really fast Pokemon. There's probably a Choice Scarf somewhere, or there, there's the possibility for the Choice Scarf somewhere, and that Braviary is probably going to be coming up front because it has the ability Defiant most of the time, which means that any Intimidate launched, or like any any... Um, attempt to lower the stats of that Pokemon are just going to be uh, nullified because it's going to give it a plus two attack boost. So I obviously don't want to lead with either of my Intimidate Pokemon here. Um, I think I want Tapu. I think I need Arcanine here, right? Because he's got Kartana. So I think these three are for sure. In the last one, I either want Tapu Bulu, um, Gyarados, or Togedemaru. I don't think I want Togedemaru here uh, just because he has Garchomp and Arcanine and Kartana and sometimes Bravier carry a uh, superpower, sometimes Gar or Snorlax carries high horsepower. So um, with that in mind, I don't want to be super weak to this opposing Tapu Koko, so I think I am going to bring my Tapu Bulu here. Um, it's not amazing in this matchup. Maybe Gyarados would be better. I just don't want to... I, the thing is that I, I really don't want to get swept by that Tapu Koko, so I'm going to bring Tapu Bulu. I need to be really careful with Nihilego in this matchup. Purgeon will help a little bit with that, with protecting it, but especially without knowing where the Choice Scarf is, it's going to be tricky. Um, yes. Anyway, I'm home for the summer now, so I've been doing streaming a bit more. I want to, I want to try and do... Maybe not daily uploads, but more more consistent uploads than I was doing back at school now that I have so much free time. So, opponent goes Braviary and Garchomp. That's not super surprising. Um, yeah, given, like... The thing is, we don't know Garchomp's Choice Scarf, so we're going to play differently if we, like, depending on if Garchomp holds the Choice Scarf item. What is nice is that Persian here has the Fur Coat ability, um, and that's good because Fur Coat cuts the damage of physical attacks in half. I feel like he has to be afraid of Fake Out and... Um, fake Out and... Hidden Power or Power Gem, which would, if I'm Life Orb, will do a lot of damage to, not to Braviary. So, um, even though I, my my Nihilego does have Hidden Power Ice, um, if Garchomp was not, if we knew for a fact that Garchomp was not Choice Scarf, then we would go for Foul Play Hidden Power Ice here and try and pick up a KO. But seeing as it's how it's okay, perfect. So because we didn't know if the if the Garchomp was Choice Scarf, we, I decided to do this. Um, we're about to learn, but depending. So if Garchomp flinches before Nihilego moves, then we know for a fact that it's holding the Choice Scarf item. Um, Ruskin activating here. It is Choice Scarf, so that's pretty interesting to note. Um, yeah, that makes things a lot more interesting here. We can't... Hmm. So we can take the KO on the Garchomp here without without really risking too much, but that still kind of limits our options versus this Braviary. What could he have in back? If he gets into Kartana after we KO this... Um, after we KO this Garchomp. So even though, we could, even though we could KO Garchomp here, it might be better to just go... We could kill the we could kill the Braviary. Is that better? He doesn't have any other Pokemon that are immune to ground type attacks, so I think I'm gonna go after the Braviary here. Um, I'm gonna go Foul Play and Sludge Bomb and just hope that it picks up the KO onto this Braviary. If it doesn't, we're gonna be in trouble though. He could also choose to not lock himself into Earthquake. Nope, he goes he locks himself into Earthquake. So that's that's interesting. Um, I don't. I, the other problem with this team is because it was kind of I was like studying for finals and I had a lot going on in, in real life. Uh, so because of that, I, I didn't have as much time to prepare as I would have liked, and that means that I really don't know my damage calculus with this team. So he, I expect him to go for a Tailwind here. Earthquake Tailwind, I think, is, is pretty solid play. Foul play does... I feel like Sludge Bomb should do enough. If it doesn't, Nihiligo sucks. Sludge Bomb comes out, Nihiligo might suck, but a critical hit, so we never learn. Now we get a special attack boost. Now Garchomp is forced to Earthquake its partner, um, and things are looking up, I would say. I also don't know if Earthquake is a 2 KO. That did a lot of damage. That's going to be like Adam and Garchomp for sure. Okay, Kartana does come in here. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think do you think Earthquake 2 KOs? I took rough skin damage. So that would be... A, nah, there's no way Earthquake 2 KOs here. I'm going to go Protect with my Nihilego and uh, Parting Shot here into the Garchomp because first of all, it's guaranteed to 
it's guaranteed to um, get the parting shot off. I think there's a good chance Cartana protects here because it doesn't want to take an earthquake. And if Cart so either either here's the thing, either Cartana protects and Persian doesn't take any damage here, or we get a safe switch into either or it doesn't protect it eats an earthquake, or it doesn't protect and Gartomp switches. In which case, whatever switches in here is going to take a minus one in both stats. And because we got rid of the Braviary, okay, so he's earthquaking and he's not protecting. So this is going to be earthquake and some kind of attack. Gartomp goes for the earthquake, doesn't work on Nihilego. Works on the other two. We need Earthquake to not KO Persian here. It has Fur Coat, so like it shouldn't, but it still could. Oh, Persian's the best. Okay, it actually does like a lot of damage to Kartana. I did a press one if you're surprised at how much damage that did. That did a lot of damage. Anyway, we're out of here now. Garnet's at minus one, soon to be minus two. Um, we do have to watch out for this Kartana, but the fact that we still have Arcanine in the back, safe and sound, safe and healthy, I think is a good sign. So I want to send an Arcanine here. He could sub, he could attack, but nothing Kartana does really like seriously threatens. Um, Arcanine, and I think that's good. So Gartrop's now at minus two, Kartana's at minus one. Unless we have Kartana's, it could be a Z move. He actually goes for Seek of Sword into my Arcanine, so he just wants to KO the Persian. He or she, I don't know, I don't know who I'm playing against. Um, okay. He doesn't want an Earthquake again, right? Probably. He doesn't want his Kartana to go down here either, so... If it's Assault Vest, I think if... Oh, this is tough because if Kartana holds the Assault Vest item... I think, I feel like he earthquakes here. Both my Pokemon are weak to ground. I'm going to go for it. So I'm going to go Hidden Power into Garchomp. I'm going to hope that my Nihilego survives the turn. Um, I want to get Intimidate off the field here. What I don't want to happen is I don't want Garchomp to switch. Even though nothing really wants to take plus one Hidden Power Ice, I still, I would like to get rid of this Garchomp now before it gets too late. Um, yeah. But the fact that I, oh uh, yeah, that was probably too obvious. His Arcanine comes in. Okay, so now we've seen all four of his Mons. Um, Arcanine is still pretty strong here, but the Garchomp in back is, is pretty worrying. If I Hidden Power Ice the Kartana here, it might have been better. Or if I subbed, it's it's tricky because, like, his Kartana was so threatened by my Arcanine that I feel like it wants to, to uh, protect here. But what if it doesn't have protect, you know? So, I get the I get the Grassy Seed boost. My Nihilite goes a little bit bulkier. Actually, kind of significantly bulkier. He goes for Detect. So, this was... Not the best play I could have made. The best play probably would have been sub, but it was it was just one of the safer ones, I guess. We didn't know if he had protect though, which kind of which would have changed things. Um, and this is a situation where with Kartana, like I just don't like giving it grassy terrain because its attacks hit like way harder. We also still haven't seen a Z move, so Kartana could have a Z move or a Focus Dash. Um, those are the likely items here, or Scope Lens even. That's that's not uh, that's an item that's not unpopular. Um, I'm gonna go protect here and switch into Arcanine. This team is very, very heavily based around switching and, and positioning, so I do, need, I do need to keep, like, my endgame in mind. I think I want to keep, like, I can't let Arcanine go down, obviously, because that's kind of my main answer to Kartana, although Persian can help as well. Um, I'm bringing Arcanine in here because it lets me threaten Flare Blitz on Kartana. It lets me uh, intimidate both these Pokemon, and with an intimidate and a defense boost, Arcanine can never break my sub, and his Arcanine can never break my sub. And if Kartana had switched into Garchomp here... Um, it would have taken an Intimidate, and then my Nihiligo most likely, yeah, could definitely have lived an Earthquake. This is, this isn't the same Nihiligo spread that I used in Melbourne, so I'm not as familiar with the Calcs. This one is less, okay, good. This one is less defense, but more, um, special defense. It's to make Driftblum Calcs more favorable. Smart Strike comes out into my Arcanine, actually. That's interesting. And Close Combat comes out into my Nihiligo. Okay, so Flare Blitz could not break the sub. Close Combat could break the sub. Let's find out speed tiers as well. I think my this is my super slow Arcanine. Yeah, okay, this is my super slow Arcanine. Yeah, on this team. This is tricky, right? Because I feel like he wants to get his Kartana out. He wants to get his Garchomp in. But if I mm, okay, what do you what do you think if I went Hidden Power into Kartana and switch in Persian? That lets me threaten Fake Out. It lets me threaten. I can also protect and go into Persian. Would that be better? Is that better? Hang on. If I go protect and switch into Persian, I didn't... Wait, I, did I just protect? I did. So I'm going to go hidden power and switch to Persian. Um, this is super risky, I think, but I can live a smart strike, definitely, and I think Cartana might want to get out here. Nope. Cartana wants to stay in here. Cartana really wants to stay in here. Okay, that's bad. Smart strike comes out into Nihilego. Okay. I could have just gone Flare Blitz here, but no crits. That's good. Um, Yeah. Hidden Power comes out. This should pick up the KO because I'm plus one, but it might not. Okay, Nihiligo does not suck. That's what I learned. 
Cartana's down, so this this makes this game a lot easier. Helping him, Bloom Doom does KO Arcanine, so uh, especially at minus one. So, oh, into Persian. Wait. Ooh, Persian. No, no, no. Okay, this we get to lose this. I take it back. Okay, this is going to be close, I think. Uh, I'm going to send Arcanine again to get the Intimidate onto the Garchomp, but we don't know what Garchomp's going to lock itself into. It could lock itself into Poison Jab. We don't know the item on that Arcanine. Guys, I think that might be Choice Band Arcanine. Just because... Close combat to the... I mean, it's super effective damage, sure, but it's also Fur Coat, and it was Intimidated. Uh, it was? Yeah, it was Intimidated. So, let's see what happens here. There's two turns of Grassy Terrain left, so I can actually go Protect Nihilego here and switch to Type of Blue. I feel like if this Garchomp wants to lock into anything, it wants to lock on into Rock Slide here. If I was a Garchomp, I would lock into Rock Slide here. So I'm going to switch into Bulu. I still have a turn of Grassy Terrain after this. My, my hope is that even if he goes for Earthquake, I can live it with minus two, um, minus two Garchomp. I think should be able to survive. He goes for Rock Slide. This should be, I think, actually close combat. Um, if he is locked into close combat, he's going to have a really hard time dealing with Tepa Bulu in the endgame. So... This isn't the worst thing in the world. Close Comet comes out into my type of Lulu, so this is minus two Arcanine in Close Combat. I don't know my calcs well enough to know how much that should be doing, but I think the fact that he's gone to for three consecutive Close Combats, I mean, it, it wasn't a bad move at any of those times, but I think he might be choice locked. Yeah. Hmm. So I think I I, might, I think I'm gonna go Hidden Power here. Uh, like if I got rid of the Arcanine, then I would I would sh for sure win the Tapu Bulu. But I'm gonna go up to the Garchomp because it can't protect itself. If I get rid of the oh he forfeits. Okay yeah I think it was Choice Band locked. Okay so good game to my opponent. Um, my thought process there was if I got rid of the ta of the Garchomp because my Arcanine is toxic. Um, also because helping him Bloom Doom KO's Arcanine, I think I probably could win. And his Arcanine would have been at minus three anyways. And I just didn't want to risk a Rock Slide comeback even though with Grassy Terrain. Giving leftovers to every, like every single Pokemon in the field, it does help a little bit. So, good game to my opponent, and yeah, that's that's I guess how the team is supposed to work. I think I still think I either like I, I don't know how to bring the right Pokemon with that team. You know, like it's super hard to figure out what you're supposed to bring. I don't know why I choose the music. I turned it off. Um, but yeah, anyway, I was saying Ketchup Plant. He was like so nice. I like so basically this, what happened was I was trying to prepare for regionals. I was trying to use an updated version of my Melbourne team. Um, I'm also from Virginia. Wow, and I just like it wasn't working, and I played against him on ladder. Oh boy. Oh boy, wait, this is scary. I played against him on ladder and I was like like and he, he whooped me and I was like, Man, that seems pretty good. So I was thinking to myself, I was like oh, like I really like I really like Tapu Bulu, like I really would like to use Tapu Bulu here, but like I I've never I've never like stolen a team stolen a team, you know, it's, it's kind of a silly concept I guess, but I've never taken a team without permission before. Um and it, like it just didn't sit right with me, so I was like startled with that for a bit and then I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna message the guy. So I messaged him and I was like Hey, like I have a tournament this weekend. Like, I like I really liked your team. Would you be comfortable with like me using a variant of it? Like, just asking for permission to use the mods. And he like sent me a full pace bin, and like we talked a lot and helped me like try to learn it. And I was like on an alt, so he didn't even know it was me for a while. Um, so yeah, he's like a really really great guy. Um, and this is his team, and he can play it so much better than I can. Um, yeah. And this kind of like the experience of going do it like using a team that wasn't mine and doing really badly at regionals with it kind of affirmed to me the idea that like, oh, wait, I think I want Persian here, not. Yeah, I think I want Persian here. Uh, it kind of, like, affirms me the, the idea that, like, you're always, not always, but for a player like me, like, I, ha I think I have to build my own teams, you know? Um, just because, like, they don't make, I guess they just don't make either. I guess I'm not good enough to use other people's teams. Like, this gave me a lot more appreciation of the fact that, like, I think it is a skill to be able to use a team that, like, isn't, isn't yours. <laughs> oh, wait, but now I'm going to lose to Porygon. Okay, well, I don't have to cancel. So, I should have brought Togedemaru here, I think. Um, instead, I very wisely have chosen to bring nothing that can switch into Z Hyper Beam at all. So that's good. My only, my only hope is the fact that he's Murkrow and Hariyama might mean, could mean, maybe, there's a chance, it might mean that, um, he's Conversion, which I'm not sure is any better. In fact, it's probably worse. Okay, he goes Murkrow Hariyama lead for some reason. I don't know what to expect here. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I don't know what to expect. I, I know Murkrow gets Tailwind, I know it gets Haze, I know it gets Quash, I know it gets Feather Dance, Roost, Thunder Wave, I don't know a lot. It gets Foul Play, it gets Snarl, but we don't know what it has, right? It's probably holding an Eviolite, e e Eviolite, how do you guys pronounce that? How am I supposed to pronounce that? Please tell me. 
Anyway, I'm going to go fake out into Hariyama and sub here because I don't want to deal with anything coming from that Hariyama. And I want to get a sub up here because a lot of Murko's moves don't affect Pokemon behind a sub. Like, Quash is a big one. Um, he could go into, like... Okay, he could have gone into... He or she could have gone into Porygon Z and Tailwinded. Yeah, Tailwind comes up. That's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, we do get a free sub up. And I don't think there's any way at all... I don't think there's any way that that Hariyama outspeeds my... I mean, there's a way, but I, I, I'm just going to hope that that Hariyama isn't going to outspeed my Murko, my Persian in Tailwind. Um... Because Hari was pretty slow, guys. Not gonna lie. Oh, I guess it could. It's not that slow. That's pretty slow. He'd have to invest a lot in speed. So I'm gonna go parting shot into Hari. He could quash me. That's okay. I'm just gonna parting shot to Hariyama. And hope that he doesn't quash me. We got a sub. We gave him Tailwind. I think that's a fair trade. As long as we don't lose Persian right here. That would be bad. Foul play comes out. Should have switched in blue. Oh god, wait, this could be really bad. Nihilego is the worst Pokemon ever. Persian? Okay. Woo! So we can expect here, I think. We can expect here. Uh, a I have a lamp right here. You guys want to say hi to my lamp? It's a big lamp. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's doing anything other than bumping my elbow. Okay, we're in trouble. That's the short version. I can lower his I can lower his close combat's damage, but we are in trouble. I'm bringing in Bulu. I'm saving Intimidate for later because um, I want to. We don't want to lose Nihilego here. That's the first thing that, that is important. Foul play will no longer break the sub, but it's too late because we already had the sub broken. Sludge Bomb comes out, so we do get another Sludge Bomb off before that Hariyama can attack next turn. It's actually good damage. Close combat into Bulu. Ah, yes, I'm the best. <laughs> okay. Ah, wait, that actually did heck of damage. I assumed he would double into Nihilego, but I guess that was that was smart as well. Um... Yeah, and now everyone gets leftovers recovery. It's kind of like a nice, happy party. Wait, that was intimidated Hariyama too. Hariyama is super strong, guys. That was that was like minus one Hariyama. This turn, foul play Tailwind. I don't know. Can I, I please have haze? That'd be cool. Oh wait, no. If he hazes the way this drops, that'd be scary. Um, I think this turn I'm gonna go sub again because I'm not super scared about that Murkrow. Um. And if if this if I don't lose either of my mods and I get a sub up next turn I can go fake it, actually regardless I can go fake out into Murkrow and launch a Sludge Bomb into the Hariyama, um, it'd be better with the sub but because I outspeed it, Quash comes out into Nihilego. Okay, this could be really bad. Uh, this is probably like Bull Punch or something silly. Close combat. Ow 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 ow. Oh Nihilego, no you suck. <laughs> I hate Nihilego. <laughs> Just Sludge Bomb. Yeah, I guess Protect was safer. That was not smart of me. Okay, well. Um, that was bad. That was actually super bad. Nihilego taking so much damage and not getting a sub up and not taking a KO is really bad. Yeah. Not smart. I, I should have just protected. I just got greedy. I was like, yeah, he goes for Poison Jab here. And then he just didn't. Um, we did see three of the four, three of four of Murkrow's moves, which is the only positive I can say from that. Uh, we're going to launch a fake out into Murkrow. This should, this, this launches a Sludge Bomb for free. I don't think he has any Steel types, as I recall. He's playing well. He or she is playing well. Arcanine comes in. Okay. Um, yeah, that's kind of bad. The problem is Quash is still a threat, right? Like, they can still go for Quash. Okay, also, I need my calculator because I forgot how much HP my sub sees. Big damage. Actually, big damage. That actually did a ton. Okay. 188 divided by 4. Four. That's 47. That means that I have 1 HP, 2 for you to use this up. Um, he could quash, I guess. I don't want to use my... Man. Man. I could foul play, right? I could foul play and just get... I could double the Arcanine. With Sludge Bomb Foul Play, I think it goes for Quash, but I think he might go for Tailwind. So, Arcanine goes for Protect, so I kind of got this correct, I guess you could say. Tailwind comes out, so we do have to stall up this Tailwind again, um, which is really annoying, to be honest. <laughs> Not gonna lie. We do get Taunt on Murkrow, so it's probably gonna reduce speed, or, like, have to use Foul Play. And actually, with the... Oh, if only I had Sub still. If you had Foul Play Sub, that would've been better. Um, unfortunately, thanks to the Grassy Terrain Recovery... 
I think there's a good chance, but he's not in range of my foul play anymore. So I'm going to go for foul play. And hope that works. If he flare blitzes or close combat's Persian, that's okay. He could also go for his Inferno Overdrive. We haven't seen his Z move yet. Um, this should be foul play and maybe flare blitz into Night Lego. Flare blitz comes out into Persian, actually. So as long as he doesn't activate his berry. Wait, guys, that did so much damage. Oh, please don't activate the berry. Okay, it's Life Orb. Okay, that explains why it did so much damage. Foul play comes out into Night Lego. So we do take a KO here. Um, if he'd done just a little bit more damage... Persian's berry would have activated and that would have been good, but unfortunately because of how much he did. Oh god, wait, he could bring in Porygon Z here and that would be really bad. That would be so bad. Oh no, 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 no. Okay. Um If he brings in Porygon Z, we're gonna be in serious trouble. Like, think about some trouble and then make it like the serious variety, and that's just about where we're gonna be. Pariyama actually comes in here, so not sure why, but that's okay. Um, he must not have a better option. His other mons in back could be Salamence or even Boo would be better here, I think. Um, I'm not too worried about like really anything here. Um, turns of Tailwind left should be two. Okay, what if I just went Foul Play into Hariyama? I could Parting Shot out and reset my reset my everything. Parting shot out is safer. It resets my. But nah, foul play is so good. I'm gonna do this. Foul play comes out. Into Nihilo. 69 down to 51. Still enough for a sub. Foul play comes out. Parting shot would have been better in the in the end. He can still send in Porygon Z here. Sludge one comes out, picks up the KO on this Hariyama. So, um, this is still pretty bad. It's, we're up 4-2 and one of them's a Murkrow, but it, it depends on what the last Mon is, right? Because if it's, like, anything, we're going to be in trouble, you know? But it's not over. I'm not saying it's over. Salamence comes out. That is highly unfortunate for my opponent. Um, I don't know what Salamence does, though. It could be physical. It could actually be physical. What could it be? Physical? Yeah, it could be physical. Um, well, I don't know what it is, but Salamence is a super high attack stat, so I'm going to go into Bulu. Is it better to go into blue? I can party. Nah, I don't want to lose Persian here. I do want to get some recovery up. I'm going to go into blue. I want to reset Persian because if Nihilego goes down, I actually don't have good ways of getting rid of Salamence. I have Toxic Arcanine. That's it. It depends if it's physical or special, right? If it's special, it really only gets one good Draco Meteor before it goes down. If it's physical, I can intimidate it and party shot it. But let's, let's find out. We're going to find out very rapidly, I think. Salamence goes for a Flamethrower. Into Tabu Bulu, so I actually would prefer Tabu Bulu to go down here. But I think I'm going to survive with just... Okay, great, I'm down. Wait, that actually did so much damage. Foul play comes out as well. So, Bulu's down. That's actually good. Bulu actually doesn't do any... I mean, I could Bloom Doom the Murkrow, which would be fine. But we learned that it was special. Um, Tailwind's gone as well. So, the fact that it's special is good because... I want it to be special. Um, it's just good because... because it really should only have Draco Meteor, I think, to be strong. We're going to Hidden Power and Fake Out. Is that good? I think that's pretty good. Two Foul Plays should also KO this Ments, um, as should repeated Hidden Powers. Quash is actually super annoying here. The Quash is, like, the most annoying thing ever. He's got to be afraid of this. Okay. Sub was sub was a real threat there. Um, but I didn't go for it. Because uh, I probably could actually, I think sub is better because if he's Z Draco to use his Z move. I revealed it in power, right? So he, he could be afraid of that. I think what he does here is, is Quash Dragon move. So I'm trying to think if there's a way that I can cover both options here. Like, I can parting shot pretty freely. He's got to go for Quash with Murkrow, right? I'm going to make a read and expect. I don't want to lose, though. I really don't want to lose. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make the read. I mean, he has to go quash, right? He has to go quash. I'm making the read. I'm going to protect with my Lego, but he could he could quash Persian. Maybe he doesn't have speed tears. I'm taunting Murkrow. Ah, quash. 
I'm genuinely upset. Okay. Well, this could be terrible. If I just didn't power ice, I would have won. Oh my god, that's so frustrating. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. Z Dragon comes out. Rawr. And Denial Lego. Oh god, Denial Lego, I'm sorry. Is it too late now? Is this sorry? I can lose this one, actually. Like, actually, I think there's a good chance that I do lose this one. Because of Murkrow. Wait. That's actually pretty bad. What if you went after Persian? Okay. Woo! 73 down to. I could have parting shot. Uh, nah, I probably couldn't have parting shot. I didn't survive. Um, okay. Well. Now what? This is actually really intense. I think I could lose this one still pretty easily. The re the actual threat here is Murkrow. So let's say I go Hidden Power. He ha in order to get rid of in order to get rid of my in order to get rid of my Purge. But then do I Parting Shot? Or do I Foul Play? In order to get rid of my Nihilego, he he probably has to double. No, he could probably just Draco Meteor. But he probably couldn't do it without Draco Meteor. I'm gonna Foul. If I Parting Shot, I get a free Fake Out. But then I can't use foul play anymore. I'm going for foul play into the mess. Ah, of course, Hydro Pump Salamence. Should have should have considered that one. Yeah. And now because there's one turn too many in Tailwind, I think I lose. Foul play comes out from the Murkrow into my Persian. Not gonna activate my Berry, of course. Uh, I'm gonna go for foul play into Mens. And not do enough damage. Okay, so this is pretty bad. I think I lose. <laughs> the turn where the turn reset tailwind was really important. I guess he called my my protect uh, taunt. The thing is that actually, I mean, I'm pretty specially bulky in my Arcanine. I could actually survive, but I don't think my Persian can survive an attack from that immense. And I don't think extreme speed could to a KO. I guess. Okay, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go extreme. I don't know extreme speed. That's right. Okay. Um. Well, the only way in which I win this is if um my Persian survives, right? Because I don't have extreme speed. So I'm gonna go Toxic Foul Play. Draco Meteor connects. Arcanine? Nope. Persian. I lost. I think I actually lost to Murkrow. <laughs> that's really upsetting. Um, That's okay. Persian goes down here. The thing is that Foul Play is gonna do a lot of damage. Like, actually, a lot of damage. Oh, <laughs> so much damage. Okay, guys. I know it looks bleak. I agree. It looks pretty bleak. But, Hydro Pump can miss. Murkrow's on a timer. Grassy Terrain, please last. Please last, Grassy Terrain. No! <laughs> please! No! Grassy Terrain. <laughs> this failed me. Okay. Tailwind's still up, right? We got one more? Yeah. Yeah, overall, just, I do not recommend you ever play a game in the way that I just played this game. Ever. Also, there's Murkrow's Taunt. That's gonna be, he probably has Taunt on the Murkrow, right? If I were Murkrow, I would have Taunt. Tailwind, Foul Play, Quash. One more. Hydro Pump. He might have not PP maxed his Hydro Pump. That's the other option. Alright, turn two of Toxic. This is Arcanine versus the world, guys. Salamence is minus two and Murkrow is the real threat. Isn't that kind of a silly thing to say? I'm gonna go for Toxic into... Or is it better to get rid of Murk? I think it's better to get rid of Mur I'll take recoil damage though. I'm gonna get rid of it's better to get rid of Murkrow, I think. No, nah, I'm, I'm gonna talk to the Salamence. Drigger Meteor comes out. He's going for foul play. He didn't want to miss Hydro Pump, I guess. 133. Oh no, no. I'm still alive, but barely. Still alive, but I'm barely breathing. Alright, Toxic on both. Foul play is gonna do damage, but not enough to KO. Um, and now we just need Toxic to not be terrible. Foul play comes out. I don't know how bulky Murkrow is. 79. Okay. Okay. In order to win this game, we need to get rid of Murkrow. So here's here's what it kind of comes down to. This turn, I give if I if I think Murkrow Tailwinds, then I Flare Blitz. If I think Murkrow Foul Plays, then I Protect. So I think Murkrow Tailwinds, so that his Murkrow can be fast. Nope. Oh, I realized too late. There's no reason for him to Tailwind. Okay. He's minus six. So if Flare Blitz KOs, <laughs> there's a chance. 99. Guys, if Flare Blitz KOs, we can win this. 
I don't think Flare Blitz KOs though, because Murkrow is hecka bulky. But maybe. We need, we need a crit, because we are no Oh, we're not even offensive, Arcanine. Okay. I think... Oh, Hydro Pump definitely... Ooh, Hydro Pump might not KO, guys. I'm gonna, All I'm saying is this is going to be close. I should have protected. Okay. Minus 6 Salamence <laughs> versus 41 HP Arcanine. <laughs> if I had protected... Okay, if I had Extreme Speed right now, I'd be so happy. I'd be so happy. Draco Meteor. That's not going to KO without a crit. So here's his win conditions. He can Draco Meteor crit... I'm gonna protect again. I think I'm gonna get this one too. I think I'm gonna get the double protect here. It's like Hydro Pump! Please, Arcanine, please, please. This is minus six. Did we do it? Did we do it? I think we did it. We did it. <gasps> oh my gosh. To anyone who says that low ladder battles are not interesting. This opponent was below 1500, and this was one of the closest matches I've had in a while. I'm not saying it was the best match I ever had, but it was close. 1498 from Ryder, from Virginia, from my home state of Virginia. Arcanine protects itself. What if he had roots? Can you guys imagine? I would have thrown it in my mouth. And maybe out of my mouth as well. Anyway, we do win this one because Toxic Arcanine, 1v2s, Salamence, and Murkrow. What a game. Wow. 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 That's all I have to say. Wow. Okay, anyway, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and you, you wanted to, out of the goodness of your heart, leave a like. Because you are an amazing person. I would appreciate that personally. But if you don't want to leave a like, I support you. So just do what you think is right. Um, Yeah, like I said, I'm home for summer. So I'm, I'm down to create more content uh, for YouTube. I am going to be streaming more with Twitch as well. So... I'm kind of just chilling, guys, honestly. Like, I got free time. I have been doing nothing. Um, it's been nice. So, anyway, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you next time. Goodbye.